got a fever. And the only prescription is over the line. This, I'm sorry, Smokey, you were over the line. This is the Is the cigar authority? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. That was pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would. I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Barry Stump. Put the scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, a single malt. Blend of Livid, Blend Fittick, perhaps. Maybe a Blend Gow. Any blend. It's time to light them up. Sounds really fun. It's time. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, July 8th, 2017, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage. Today, we get ready for the Cigar Industries International Convention, also known as the IPCPR, and we're going to go through what we expect to see and possibly, more importantly, what will not be there. Joining us today will be the Director of Sales for Rocky Patel Cigars, Max Bickler. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority Podcast, broadcasting for over eight years and now the longest continually running cigar podcast. Voted the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Voted the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. And now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority, is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time. I almost slipped into my old my old spiel there. Here we go. Uh, or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. Okay, we're going to smoke for the first cigar before we bring Max Bickler around. We're going to light it up and uh, see what it's all about. This is the Rocky Patel 20th anniversary. And before I hand it over to you, Barry, we have a uh, double band, a foot band on it. And the interesting thing, very beautiful box press cigar. But I want you for one second to turn the cigar backwards. I kind of like the band backwards better than frontwards. It's a pretty I, awesome looking back of the band. I agree. I like the double X versus the spelling out of 20th. And the fact that he says uh, 20 years and counting. And counting. He plans like, to move forward. But so, he probably couldn't have the X on the front of the band due to another brain. Okay. There's certain people that get a little testy about the X. I used to do a thing on Fridays where I whatever cigar I was smoking, I'd turn the cigar over and take a picture of the back of the band and say, okay, back of the band contest, go. And people would try to figure mm-hmm. out what it was, and in a short period of time, somebody would come up with the, with the right answer. This one, I've looked at a lot of back of the mm-hmm. bands because I did this for quite a while, and this is the best back of the band I've ever seen. I just want to make note of it because most people ain't, wouldn't even – tend to look at it. But tell us about the Rocky Patel 20th. Well, the Rocky Patel 20th is the first cigar from the Cigar Authority Care Package in the month of July. And two years ago, Rocky Patel celebrated 20 years in the business of creating iconic cigars. So for this special release, Rocky Patel couldn't deliver something short of magnificent. The cigar follows the lineage of the Rocky Patel decade and 15th anniversary brands and takes things to a whole new level. Rocky spent four years in development for this blend that combines fillers from Esteli and Jalapa, Nicaragua, as well as Yamastron from Honduras. It is encompassed in an elegant Honduran wrapper, box-pressed, beautiful, and legendary, just like Rocky himself. The cigar carries an MSRP of $10.99 to $13.89, and we are smoking what looks like the Toro. And this is uh, the natural, also the foot band says the natural. Yeah. Is there a Maduro version of this? Um, if there is, I have not smoked it. Hmm. I'm going to have to ask that question. Good a little question. blueberry honey on the wrapper, the outside wrapper. Just the smell of the outside wrapper. Two ways to smell, smell a cigar. You can smell the foot, the open end of it, or the wrapper across your nose, the whole body of the cigar. The wrapper, as you mentioned, is Honduran. This is a Honduran wrapper. Beautiful. You don't see a lot of Honduran wrappers. No. You don't see a lot of beautiful Honduran wrappers. Very, name, very nice. name two cigars right now that have Honduran wrappers on them. Go. Aladino. Boom. There's one. I wasn't talking to Dave. <laughs> and 20th. Two. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's not this. It's two. I don't know if you said that. but I don't know. I don't know of another cigar that... Very that, nice. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. I think Aladino has a... Uh, Honduran wrapper? It's all Honduran. 
Okay. Doran Corojo. Very interesting. We, we haven't had that on the show yet, but very interesting cigar. Let's give it a cut and light. This is part of a care package, Yes, right? it is. The first cigar of this month's care package. So everybody right. will have smelled the outer wrapper, and they'll smell that yeah, it's blueberry, blueberry honey. Blueberry honey. Okay, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. I almost forgot to say that. You know who's uh, already at the show and uh, partway through setting up his booth oh. is Nick Perdomo. I don't think he is. I think he I is. saw – well, he personally ah, made up here. All right. All right. There we All go. Right. Perdomo Cigars we, are not Because one of I the think people. last night he was in Miami at – He uh, went to a concert of some yes, kind. Yes, he did. He went to Paul McCartney. I saw Chris Harper, one of his uh, yes. sales guys. Working. Working, <laughs> working at the trade show. He has people for that. He usually is the hands-on guy for that, too. But maybe as they're bringing the stuff in, the crates and stuff in, it's not assembly time yet. Uh, he'll get there today. And the assembly began. Um, our friend uh, Oliver Nouveau from United Cigar is out there. And that assembly has begun. He sent me some pictures of uh, the crates and crates and crates that come in, the work that goes into it. Just an amazing uh, the show. We'll get, we'll get into that. So let's give it a light. I had a, a, a little taste and uh, a little doughy taste. Dough. And how oily the wrapper is. I like how it also feels almost like fine sandpaper. Yeah. So there's a, there's a little bit of tooth to the wrapper. I would have gone with silk, but maybe maybe yours has tooth and mine's silky. S silk like your smoking jacket. That's right. From Smoky Joe's Clothing. <laughs> Smoky Joe's Clothing. Dot com. That's an additional right. commercial. Yeah, no charge. <laughs> All right, we're going to light our cigar, speaking of commercials, with the Vertigo Equalizer. This is a single action, meaning that you press down on the button and the top opens as you strike the igniter and you ignite four glorious high-powered turbo jets that are fed by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. It also has, right in the handle, a little flip-out bullet punch that goes past Vertigo for you folks that love those bullet punches. And it's good to have it. I'm people, not a fan of bullet punches but it's good to have it it is good to have in a pinch and uh for those of you who do like it you'll you'll notice on other lighters the bullet punches close where the fill chamber is and that puts a bunch of schmuckus in the fill chamber not so technical term with the schmuckus. vertigo lighters so the vertigo equalizer retails for 19.99 and it's a bargain at that it is well there'll be some vertigo in my in my bag tonight <laughs> yes there is mine's already packed yeah i'm ready to go I look forward to beating TSA with my plastic Nothing worse than lighters. getting to a trade show and you don't have a lighter. But from what I understand, if you go to the Vertigo booth on the first day and they you let them show you the new lighters that are there, they will give you a free lighter. You want to do that because you want a jet lighter. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You need one and then you go by and refill it during the, the show and stuff. And while you're there, look at their new lighters because that's what they're there for. I can't wait to see the new stuff. Me too. They wow me every time. Any taste? I'm doughy, pretty good, right? What are you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> no, pretty good though, right off the bat, right? Chocolate chip cookie is what I'm getting. Wow. And you got a nod from Sean in the audience here. He must be tasting yeah, chocolate chip cookie. The crumbs left over in the bottom of the box. It's not Chips Ahoy chocolate chip. It's like... The Market Basket brand. Oh, See, I'm going to go with it's Cookie Crisp cereal, and the last bowl you pour on in that first bite that has the powder and the milk and a little bit of the extra chocolate look chips. This, look at the back of the band on this. It's awesome. The back of the band is the play. Yeah, there's no hiding what you're smoking with You could with sell this two different cigars in the store. Turn one box upside down <laughs> and, put, and put them both out there and see which one sells. And I'd say the one in the back of the band. It's awesome back of the band. Not that there's anything wrong with the front of it. It's a lot, lot of gold here, silver. He spared Very no nice. expense on the band. No, the time. band is awesome. So last week we uh, touched on uh, who's going to buy, what companies and things that are going to be, who's out there looking to buy. We mentioned Eric Canton is actually In okay. acquisition mode. He says, I'm okay for people to know. How am I going to buy something if people don't know I'm interested in buying people? I'm looking. Michael Cusano, I'm looking. Jay Cortez, they didn't say it. I just know it. Swisher, I just know it. General, I just know it. Um, 
Toscano. Didn't they just make a big buy? They bought the Parodi company. Toscano, which is the Italian stogie out of Italy, bought the company in the U.S. that was making the Italian stogies. Now, does that make them a monopoly on ugly cigars? Yes, they may be. Is that monopoly. illegal? Can they? Can that they happen? Can, I don't know. There's, there's other people out there, brands we may not carry, that have ugly cigars, too. They have ugly cigars, but not fire-cured with that certain taste, the yeah, ones you cut in half. Yeah, I think they, certain own, thing. they own the market on it, but they, anybody can do it if they want. If they could have, without FDA, they should have come out with a cigar called Medusa. Medusa. Funky cold Medusa? That's Medina. Medina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Medusa was the woman with the snake on her head that See, turned in, your in stone. It, in fairness, Dave got out of the business right around when that song hit. He heard that song and went, yeah, that's not for me. I quit. <laughs> I got to get out. I'm out. I got to get out. No tone load for Dave. I think uh, you're going to see uh, CLE. You're going to see Fuente. These people are acquiring. Look Fuente? At, look at, yeah. Yep. Have they ever acquired someone before? Uh, they have. They have acquired Sosa. Remember Sosa? Ah. Sosa, we, we reported, was, was going to CLE. Yeah. He was the one buying it. And then that was pulled away. And Fuente said, we're buying it. I don't know if they offered more or what ended up happening, but they ended up buying it. So uh, Does well, that mean that Diamond Crown, the folks at Diamond Crown, J.C. Newman, will end up distributing for Sosa because they distribute for Fuente? Yes, that would happen. Mm. Yes, it would. So maybe we'll end up having Sosa at the show if they push it on us, if, if they're showing it. Will they be showing it? I don't know. That's a question. We're going to have all the answers next week. But who's not going to be at IPCPR? Who is not going? It usually is set up at the booth. <coughs> Why aren't they going? What does this mean? So there was a press release that came out. Our friends from Recluse. Will not be setting up this That's year. That's correct. Scott Weeks put that out. And his reasoning for it was the California. Tax. Yeah. California. California's tax went into effect on July 1st, being that the thing so far on the West Coast, they figure the largest state, uh, one of the largest states, will not be uh, present at the show. 49 other states will. Yeah. 49 other. Yeah. But they're not going to be there. Cuba Rica, which is the people that do the um, spirit, spirit of, of art, art via Havana. Yep. yep. Uh, they're based out of California. Mm -hmm. They can just drive over. It's he's close. also hot and cold when it comes to actually having a booth at the trade yeah, show. He shows up, but whether or not he's got a booth and yeah. set up officially. Yeah, he's been on and off. Um, also has been legacy brands. Our friend Victor Vitale, Tortuga, Oravivo, Amanda Sante. Uh, last year, he did not show at the show. and This year, he's not showing at the show. Yet he's still out there, but he's not showing at the show. Very expensive, by the way. I only have half my headphones. But uh, he Jiggle is... his wire. Jiggle <clears throat> my wire. But um, he did... Thank you. Oh, no. It's on. It's off. It's on. It's on. It's all right. It's off. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's just right. It's cr I can barely hear. But... Um, Victor will not be showing this year at the show. Uh, Padilla. Padilla, I, I see listed as they're being at the show. I talked to the man himself. He will not be at the show. Uh, Don Benigno. Really? Um, not showing at the show. Keep going, Barry, till you get it. Okay. Nope. Terrible. There we go. I'm on. He's on. It's funny. It's riveting radio. Try, tr but it, trying to do it without, without hearing yourself. <laughs> You're used to hearing yourself. It's weird. Uh, yeah, Don Benigno will not be at the show. Will not. Let, let me preface this by saying will not be set up at the show. They won't have a booth, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be going around. Which the other way is going around and kind of sleazy of going around into other booths and poaching. Right. You don't want to do that. But it's undebonair. It's, it is undebonair, but I think we're going to see a lot of it. And Pay attention. You, unless Pay you attention. people are able to do it at the circle bar, yeah. uh, the, the square bar as yeah. well. Now, you say circle bar and you say square bar, but we're in a different hotel. Right. Now you're we're in a, a different totally convention different center. So area. Yeah, there is no place. There's really going to be no place to conglomerate. That's, I don't even know if that's the right word. Yeah. It's not. But there's going to be no place to get together after. So I'm sure there's places to get together. We just don't know where those places are. Will it be the circle bar? Will everybody just go down there and say, let me go Take there? Take an Uber ride for eight bucks and go yeah. over there? I oh. doubt it. Yeah? Why would you leave your hotel? I don't know. Because where is everybody? Probably at the hotel. 
No, there's a whole bunch of different hotels. There's no central yeah, hotel there isn't. I don't like this. No, I don't either. Uh, Senorial, which is Hochi Blanco, as we know, left for EPC. Jose. Yeah, Jose Blanco. Jose Blanco uh, will not be uh, – Senorial will not be set up mm -hmm. at the show. Mm -hmm. The entire state of California mm -hmm. will not be set well, up. Well, they want to succeed anyway, so. Yeah, succeed in the union. Roberto Duran. Really? That was not. that surprised me. I seen that on the yeah. list this morning. Uh, there's a few others that. What do you got? Uh, Gabby Caffey from Caffey Cigars, mm. who just bought his own factory. He opened up the factory. He's distributing now for another company, and he won't be at the show. Will he be at the show? Just not set up. No, he will not be He's there not at even all. Attending. Folks, I think this is a major mm. error. Major error mm. on everybody's mm. part. We have one convention a year, eighty mm. fifth. IPCPR convention. It's everybody who's everybody. It shows a, you know, set one table up, be there, yeah. have a presence to every yeah. single decent retailer is going to end up yeah. going there. How do you say no to it? Yeah. It's the these Super Bowl. Are, How do you people, say no? These are people with money they're going to buy. And you're not going to be where they're, I mean, they're walking in with money in their hands, ready to go. And you're not going to be there to take it from them. Oh my God. I think it puts a, mm -hmm. a, a sign on there that says, you know, listen, we're, we're checking out here. Yep. And one of those brands is uh, Arendoza, which was big in the southeast. Uh, Pops was the head of the brand. Uh, I think the whole FDA thing is too much for just him and his wife that run the company. They're not going. Wow. And uh, last one is Acme Cigars, which was started two years ago by a retailer and a music producer. Yeah. They're not going to the show. So. Um, and, and that's the ones are we they know throwing of. in the towel. Yeah. We're gonna. It, it seems it. Mm -hmm. you know, I do have. Uh, I have a reporter on the scene. Listening to the show, one Gianna Garofalo. Yeah. She says, there's no lack of shaped bars in Vegas. The bar at the SLS is called the Center Bar. So that is probably where people are going to be congregating. The Center Bar. The Center Bar. All right. Right in the center. We hope. The center of the circle from last year. That'll be something that you'll report on if it's not in the center. And they call it the Center Bar. That'll bother you. And then well. the thing is, is the Center Bar in the middle of the casino floor. Because if it's not on the casino floor, then you can't smoke it. Mm -hmm. But if it's on the casino floor, floor, which is why you were able to smoke at the circle It bar. would have to be if it's at the center. You know the casino. You, you would think, yeah. yes. It's like impossible to get to your hotel room without going through mm -hmm. the casino. That is a fact. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. So um, what else? Uh, we have, uh, and I don't know if this is going to be part of the news, but you got Matt Booth. It's going to have a booth. Yes, and it will be part of the news. The Matt Booth booth. Mm -hmm. um, and Royal Agio is having a booth. And these are the people mm -hmm. that uh, have the Balmoral brand, Panther Agio. Mm -hmm. They're going to have their own booth. Typically, they're in with Drew Estates, which, by the way, they'll still be in with Drew Estates, right. but they're having their own booth also. So some companies look like they're going forward and having more booths, mm -hmm. and other people are saying, I'm not even going. It says, I don't know, to me... It's a huge I'm, mistake I'm for a manufacturers buyer. and it, retailers. Yeah. Does it strike you as odd that Balmoral was distributed by uh, the folks at Drew Estate and never bought them? They let Swisher, they're basically their competition, buy them? Do, were, do you think they were testing them to see if they were... Why won't you buy us? Right for the picking? Maybe. And then Maybe. Swisher comes in, swoops them up? Interesting. Interesting. Why didn't they buy them? Interesting. Because... Well, most average people are looking at Panther Agio, little company or whatever. It's just the opposite. It's little cigars, yeah, but there's yeah. billions of them. Yeah, yeah. They're huge. With a B. Yeah. So uh, those are the people we know of that aren't going there. Once we get to the show, we're going to be surprised to see more people that aren't at the show. So uh, that's that. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? And I'm going to go with Mercedes versus BMW. Or better yet, this will be a 2 4. Is Lincoln better than the Caddy? Aren't they the same thing? No, Lincoln's no. owned by Ford, right? No. no. Best car I ever had was a Caddy. I had a Lincoln, too. But it's a gangster thing, right? Make yeah. it better than a caddy? Forget yeah. about it. Yeah. Right? They're going to ride to South Jersey through the uh, pine lands and the caddy? It's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. But Mercedes BMW. So well, I, my cars. I, I, I may or may not be in the thought process of the next vehicle. Mercedes or Cadillac? You know what I find funny about or, Mercedes? Or Mercedes or BMW? 
if you I've been to Israel bodyguarding a client, and in Israel there are more Mercedes. Benz put them in your pocket on the road. Yeah, more Mercedes on the road in Israel, German-made car. I just found it hysterical and ironic that sixty percent of the cars on the road were German-made in Israel. Um, I'm gonna go with BMW because I own a Mini Cooper and it's made by BMW, so I'm biased. And it's BMW all the way. I think the BMW is now the in thing, and the old man vehicle is more the Mercedes. Yeah, I'd rather have a Mercedes. I've had two different mm-hmm. Mercedes over the years, never had a BMW. BMW is more sporty, mm-hmm. seems, whatever. They're both pretty sporty. I mean, they're, they're both feature rich. I think uh, I just like the way my car handles, I like the way it drives. I've never driven a Mercedes. So but you don't have a choice. You're driving a Mini to. Cooper, which is a joke. It's, I laugh every time I see you in it. It's ridiculous. It's not a Mercedes. I did so, set so some land be, speed records biased. today. I set some land yes, speed records did. today. Yes, so you did. I don't want to hear it. So it, it can it can move, right? It can move. You got It's free. What do you want, a Mercedes or a BMW? Uh, I want a BMW. You just changed. No, I've been BMW the whole time. Okay. Yeah. BMW. I'm Mercedes. Mercedes. I'd rather have I know Mercedes. it's easy to get us confused. I'm very confused on this question. I don't. I don't know. Actually, myself. I'd rather have an American car. It's cheaper to repair. Yeah. But if you're but buying, it's free. if you're buying, I'll take a Mercedes. And I've done it twice, and I would go in with Mercedes again. So I'm going to take your side anyway, but partially just to be against me, against Mr. Jonathan, because it's part of his charm. Part of his charm. Uh, Yep. I do have a mailbag here that pertains to what we've been uh, discussing Squeezing here. Squeezing in. Squeezing in. Uh, Daniel writes, hello, I'm a faithful listener to the show, and I love the tips and advice. Is there a place or places that are the best to see cigar liberties in Vegas? I will be in Vegas the week of the IPCPR on business and hope to get to see or meet some of them. Do you have any recommendations? And I would say that the answer is that center bar is probably – at the LS, SLS Hotel. Because Gianna's making the call. That's the place. That's right. Hey, listen, she does her research. She knows her stuff. So if G it's, says it, it's true. Okay, so now it's official. The place to meet at IPCPR is called the, the Center, Center Bar. Bar at the SLS. Max Bickler's staying there. He'll be there. Mm-hmm. If he's going to be there, Gianna's going to be there. It's got to be the place to go. That's where I'm going. I wonder if he's under contract to be staying up till three o'clock in the morning and hang side three. by side. He only with wishes Rocky it's Patel. three. He wishes it's three. <laughs> that what, would give him about five hours sleep. He's all he's for that. That's all the oxygen they pump into the. the That's not even that true. That is a myth. I, 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 you know what? When I worked there for another for for a manufacturer, I was up till five six in the morning. As soon as you hit the elevators, you got tired. Because you were no longer getting that pumped in oxygen. That's Barry, that's true. because it took four hours for you to walk to the elevator because they're not easily accessible. What happened to Devonair Jonathan? Yeah. That wasn't that, that wasn't was a fat joke. That, that was wasn't a fat joke. Yeah, that was yeah, a yeah. truth. It's a, everything is a mile away in Vegas. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, you, you, and here's another thing why you need to go to the IPCPR. You get pumped up when you go there. Yeah, you it's, do. it's exciting and you and you wanna be in the mix of things and I sleep less when I'm there. You know, it's there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it invigorates you automatically. It gets you it. pumped up, and you're pumped up for, for months and months when you get yeah, back, waiting for the new back. stuff to come in. It's 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 a good way to invigorate the industry. Yeah. And you don't want to leave home. early because, you know, you know, FOMO kicks in if you're missing out. Right. You know, is somebody going to make a fool of themselves? Are we going to have a story of course, for the show? Of course. There's going to be stories. Yes. Yeah. 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 A lot of action happens at nighttime, so – uh, that's it. So next week we're going to actually uh, come on and tell you more people that did not attend. And uh, we're going to get a lot of the information that we're going to need for our, our August 19th prediction episode. This look coming forward. So right now, early thoughts on the Rocky Patel 20th anniversary. It's very chocolatey in a uh, sweetened chocolate, like a Hershey's chocolate bar kind of way. Little tiny bit of what we call the Honduran Bite. Uh, that started off at the beginning is starting to subside a little bit and give way into that chocolatey sweetness. Yep, I agree on the Honduran bite. It's it's faint. It's not as potent as some other Honduran cigars. But to me, it's supermarket brand chocolate chip cookies all day, every day. It's got an elegant feel and taste to it. It does. It feels like it's very expensive. And yeah. How expensive is it? Ooh, ooh, it's like uh, eleven fifty to thirteen. Yeah, it's not. It's okay, not out so of the park. Yeah, so $11 to thirteen ninety. Yeah. 
just just over the ten dollar price point. I like it. So if you're smoking ten dollar cigars, bump up a little bit, spend an extra couple of bucks and try it. And I think anybody could smoke this. I think the guys that are those leather tongued superhero guys that can smoke nothing but full bodied stuff could still enjoy it. There's lots of flavor. And a guy who smokes milder stuff like myself, it's not overpowering. It's very balanced. So 1995 to 2015. So 1995, that must have been when Rocky started. Not the Rocky Tell brand, but got into the cigar business in 1995. Isn't it funny? And I look at I look at this, and I remember when he first started, but I was celebrating our 10-year anniversary. We had launched in 1995 the Potagus 150. We were the first one in the world to launch that for our 10-year anniversary party a week ahead of everybody else. And this is when he was getting into the business. It's, he became so much more successful than me, and I had 10 years <laughs> ahead of him. He, uh, but he may have visited more customers than me. He did. He sure did. Uh, Hard-working guy. Absolutely. Hard-working guy. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, uh, they have never bought a brand. They created them, and they have since 1995. Celebrating now 22 years, Rocky Patel Cigars are unquestionably the leading name in the cigar industry. Max Beckler, the director of sales for RP Cigars, joins us live when we return. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer & Sickle live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman's Garco or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. The natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes. Four sizes, including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the 
quantity produced as a vertically integrated family-owned company. Personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth-generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palma, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. This is Armand Asante, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Retailers Radio Network. And we are back live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar State. You're listening to the Cigar Authority with us from Rocky Patel Cigars, Max Bickler. Welcome back, Max Bickler, to the Cigar Authority. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's been a little while, been, so uh, we're, we're pretty excited to be back here today and back on stage. It's awesome. And right before you are heading out today. That's right. Heading out today to IPCPR. That's right. So thanks for joining us. Um, so Rocky Patel celebrating really 22 years. We're smoking the 20th anniversary, but celebrating 22 years in the industry. Uh, those that don't know you, Max Bickler, how long for you? Uh, 2000, end of 2005, 2006. So yeah, 12 years with Rocky now. 12 years with yeah. Rocky and in the yeah. cigar industry even longer than yeah, that? Yeah, even longer than that. I started in uh, high school, actually. Wow. Yeah, retail in high school. So it's been a long, long journey, actually. So your whole adult life, yeah. you're in the cigar business. That's it. How old are you now? I'm 35. 35. You're yeah. a kid, but yeah. <laughs> a lot of years he has in, in the industry. So How uh, long into our life? Will we still be referred to as a kid? What What's the breaking point? I think, think as long as the guy's saying it's older. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I think right. they get that. And there's no question. He's yeah. older. Yeah. <laughs> so. I got 22 years on him. As long as Rocky Patel cigars have been in business, which is a long time, 22 years. That's how much older I am than Max <laughs> Beckler. So let me kill myself now. Um, so uh, also, um, you actually played in a different role that, I don't know if you worked for the company or whatever, but a TV show, The Amazing Race. That's right. That 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 uh, that was part of my non-cigar career. Yes. But yeah, we wait, raced around the world on The Amazing Race, season 22, my wife and myself, you know, uh, about two weeks after we as got honey, married. Yeah, as yeah. newlyweds. As newlyweds. They were the newlyweds, and, and yeah. they were the team to beat, and the team, I, I don't know, it seemed like, all uh, daggers were on you guys. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that, <laughs> that may have started when I uh, when I was lighting up a cigar in the promo, and they I think they uh, they wanted me to be the bad guy. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, seemed, it seemed that's the way, the way it played out. And is that the way it was, or is that the way they played it out? You know, um, I think that we did so poorly in the beginning of the race. We went in with such high expectations that we were going to win each leg and probably just cruise to the million bucks. Yeah. And then I think we were started off so frazzled and so poorly that all of a sudden that narrative couldn't possibly be true because you've got to be good to be like, you know, yeah. hated. You know, you can't hate a guy who's just stinking it up. But uh, we turned it around and you sure did. Yeah, right at the very, very end. We turned it around. We won uh, four episodes in a row going into the finale. We felt like the hot team going into the playoffs. Sure. And then no. And, and the last one. I mean, is there any way for people to actually watch this? Yeah, yeah they are. Um, I know that it's available uh, on iTunes, and I know that it's uh, the episodes are also on, on YouTube. And, really? All yeah. the full episodes? Yeah, you can find Really them. something to yeah. check out if you, if you know Max yeah. or, or, you know, uh, and he, he sneaked some cigars in where he could. Uh, they didn't want That's you to right. do it, right? That's <laughs> right. Yeah, the uh, you know, it's, it's funny, and I – and I think now I'm past like the uh, limit of being able to talk about it, so I can let it rip now. But um, the uh, 
the show that, that, that produces the race is, is uh, World Race Productions. They loved the whole cigar aspect. They really enjoyed it. They thought it was great, and um, they were just worried that CBS would mix it. Yeah, know, because that's they're well, anti-tobacco on the whole. Yeah, that's it. But <laughs> if the guy is a cigar smoker, and you know you, you're following every move he makes when he's sleeping in a hallway, whatever he ends up doing, and he ends up lighting a cigar, that's what he does. But let's make believe like this doesn't happen. Yeah, and, and and that's it was part of my narrative. Yeah, you, you yeah. Know, so so we, we did get the cigars in on a few occasions, yeah. and I had a box of Rocky Patel decades open, and when in, in our promo you yes, could see I the remember. box a decade, and and it was pretty cool, and Rocky was pumped up to see that, and it made him feel a little better about giving me that month off. But yeah, <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> and yeah, you you were missing, and people you couldn't say anything to anybody. Was and going. you were good, man. You didn't talk about no, anything. No. We tried pushing you in the back room so many times. And you gave up nothing. It was very entertaining. I'm not. I'm not a big guy into, into watching those type of shows, but it was very entertaining, especially knowing somebody in it. But you guys played a, a key role of the success of, of that show that that year for sure. Um, very very interesting. But back to cigars. Uh, Rocky is a big fighter for cigar rights and FDA, and uh, he has been instrumental. And I'm going to tell you, I, I know a lot of things behind the scenes of, of the work he, he has done. It's unbelievable, and at the end of this, if we, if we end up by some stroke of luck uh, that happened, believe me, luck wasn't involved. It was people like Rocky that uh, did some stuff, tireless stuff, with Amen connections that. that he has, uh, big connections. Yeah, it, you know, it's um, Rocky's been, as you know, uh, as involved as anybody in this entire uh, entire process, and um, he, you know, really should probably have an apartment in D.C. by right. now or buy a place because he's there nonstop. Um, and, uh, it, it's been a tireless, uh, tireless fight and Rocky's been right there in the, in the middle of it. Um, I think there's, uh, a little cause for optimism now, you know, it's yeah. always prepare for the worst and work for and hope for yeah. the best. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's some, there's some positive news out there, but you know, right now you've got to prepare for, for yeah. the worst. So here's a guy that spends so much time legislatively away from his own business, That's but right. to fight for the overall business. And despite that, huge success that he has on the other. So there's part of it, you know, and it's just amazing of some people that have, that do nothing within fighting for our rights and, and for the industry. And at the same time, of they don't even have time to go to the trade show. Right. You know, we were talking about that early before you came on. There's a whole bunch of manufacturers not even going to show up at the trade show because – yeah, you know, it's costly, and I don't have time for it. Here's a guy that's running a multi, multi-million dollar company, and certainly he has a lot more on his plate than most, and he not he only time. spends so much time in legislation and able to offer in it. We'll, yeah. we'll be at the show day one, and every second of the show, more than everybody else, some people actually have to sleep. There's a guy that doesn't even sleep. Yeah, he skips the sleep. He'll yeah. be there. he'll be there from you know the beginning to the end. And uh, the, I think the really impressive thing uh, when you look at Rocky is there are so many events that he has foregone when he could have gone and made money to be of at the course. event, and he could have rung the register at the store and absolutely crushed it. And he was in D.C. Right. You know because it's a big picture thing, and uh, it's not about uh, you know maybe that day's event or that week's event that he had skipped admitted. over it. And he's been doing this now. It's got to be five years straight yeah. of him just concentrating on legislation and, you know, basically hurting his own brand yeah. to do it. But it hasn't hurt his own brand. No, because it hasn't. You, you guys, the guys on the ground or something, are, are fighting to keep his, his brand alive at the same time. Now, you guys, are, as a company, are known for coming out with lots and lots of new product at every trade show. And we'll get, we'll get into what's coming new uh, in a little bit. But how far into the future were you able to plan as far as getting cigars on the market before that August 8th deadline of last year? We're pretty well prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Not only did they have a lot of things beforehand, and Rocky's always been known as coming out with so many different things. Um, so you plan on bringing some old things back or you bring in some new things in? So what are they? It's, it, it's going to be a bit of both. Okay. Um, I guess publicly, the ones that we can kind of talk about are, are the, the, you know, give you a little preview on it. Some of the brands we're going to be uh, releasing in the next couple of days here, and people are going to see for the first time. So the cat's going to be out of the bag. Right, it's going to so. be out of the bag tomorrow. So, yeah. so just let it out. So we'll let it. We'll, Nobody's we'll, listening to this till yeah, Monday anyway. That's right. So yeah. we'll, we'll give you a little preview. Um, this year we're going to we're going to have three new brands. 
um, which is that might be a light year for Rockets. That's quite a light year. Yeah, yes. that's a light yeah. year. That's a light year. Um, the first, one of the more uh, most exciting, is uh, the vintage 2006. All right. So what's different from the 2006 than the other vintages, which are all on fire? I mean, they all sell well. Here is a 2006. We like to say that we reinvented vintage, and uh, so the vintage series is generally between mild, mild, medium, maybe up to medium on like the 1992. Yeah. Um, the 2006 is going to offer the full-bodied cigar smoker a chance to smoke vintage because okay. it's going to be a medium to full uh, San Andreas Mexican uh, wrapper. All right. Uh, tons of flavor. Um, just a really, really nice addition to the vintage line and, and something for maybe the guy who started with vintage and is growing towards fuller bodied cigars, doesn't know where to go. He can stay in the vintage line now. This is a Honduran style? We're going to make this in our Nicaraguan ah, boutique factory. All right. High priming Nicaraguan blend. You got it. All right. And in our Nicaraguan factory, it really gives us the uh, flexibility to change on a dime. It's a smaller factory. We can make some really great boutique blends out of there because there's no secret. We make a lot of vintage. But yeah. this is our first Nicaraguan vintage that we're making at that factory, and we're going to really be able to make something that's – Same look as the other vintages? Absolutely. Of, Color? It's, it's orange. It orange. It's really good. It's like right. that. It's that Rocky Patel orange. You've seen it if yeah. you've ever been in Bern. Yeah. Got, so that's uh, – that's the first. That's, that's the a first. color that'll stand out on the shelf for sure. And you're basically looking at a sea of brown in there. Yes. Boom! That orange pops against that uh, nice dark San Andreas wrapper. It's gonna really, it's gonna It'll really pop. pop. It's gonna okay. look great. And priced with the other. Priced in line yeah. with the rest of the vintage. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next uh, cigar that's gonna be pretty exciting is uh, in our Java line. It's uh, an extension on our Java line, which you know is currently the Maduro, yeah. the Latte, and the Mint. Um, probably soon to be green, but the Java Red is now red. coming. And Java cinnamon red, what? Uh, Java Red is going to be kind of a cordial cherry chocolate Ooh. cafe. Um, it's going to have a new twist on it, and I can tell you that uh, I've smelled them burning in the in the same room, and it's 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 pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty nice. Any uh, danger in referring to it as cherry? When it comes to regulations, because flavored cigars typically are the sacrificial lamb for premium cigars, <coughs> even though those would, should be considered premium because they are. But is there a danger in referring to it as cherry, and that's why you went with the red? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It, it's it's Java Red. It's Java it, Red. It's Java Red, and it, and it'll be uh, and, and and I would be surprised if if um, it doesn't become Java Green and gotcha and, and such. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That Those sure. that haven't, and, and you know, mostly the people listening to the show are premium cigar smokers that listen to this type of show and maybe not into a flavored cigar. But I'm going to tell you, and it's no secret, uh, not just because you're here, one of the few flavored cigars or infused cigars, I'm not saying the F word again, um, <laughs> that, uh, that I will smoke is a Java. Uh, it's there, but it is not like syrupy, it's sweet. More, it's more subtle. Yeah, it's much more starts, subtle. It starts with great tobacco, and if you're using great tobacco and then trying to infuse it from there, uh, you're at a huge advantage. When you're using sand leaves and all junk and yeah. the bottom of the plant, then right. you say, what, to begin with. what can we put on this to you know jazz it up? But no, ours starts with you know great great tobacco, yeah. and and you go from there. So it's it really is uh it's an unbelievable cigar, and um, you know people love it. it, it it's you know, there's a real following behind it, so it's we're, impressive. We're smoking the 20th, Rocky Patel 20th, mm -hmm. and Barry and Jonathan are going back and forth and saying chocolate chip cookies. So you go to a Java, there it is. There's no doubt about it. I mean, the chocolate, uh, cocoa, uh, along oh, yeah. with coffee type of notes. But obviously in Java, a little more out there than subtle, like it would be in, oh, yeah. can you imagine, tastes that before, are in here. Before you get to the third release that's coming at the trade show, because yeah. you alluded it was going to be free. Uh, when we lit this cigar up, Dave noted the foot band said natural. That's right. Is there a Maduro? I noticed during our break, the you know, Rocky Patel website, which was also pointed out by Eric Lee, said it was due to be released April of this year. We just released it about uh, a month ago. Okay. The, the Maduro version of the 20th. All right. Um, we trickled it out. Really, people are going to probably see it for the first time at the show, uh, and it's a real it's, – it's a beauty. Um, it's technically not a new brand at the show, but um, – 
you know, when we release this, this is always at natural on the band. So the natural, the, the question naturally, yeah, naturally was, you know, where's the, uh, where's the follow up? Is there a Maduro? Are there going to be a Maduro? And indeed there, there is. And, okay. Uh, I guess to uh, Barry's question was about the third release. And I know this is something that uh, Barry's a little excited for. I am as well. Uh, one of my dear friends, uh, Hamlet Paredes, uh, is going to be releasing his second cigar with us. Uh, and Hamlet has been in the cigar business uh, in the United States now for two years, but in Cuba for 25 years. If you were uh, 23 years, and uh, in total, he's been in the business for 25 yeah, years. Rocky loves the anniversary. He loves the anniversary. Reason to celebrate, right? He loves it. You can say yeah. reason to celebrate. Yeah. Have some scotch, maybe right. a wine. You know? <laughs> so uh, Hamlet has come out with his second blend, the uh, follow-up to Tabacero, which is a medium to full-body blend. This is going to be a beautiful medium bodied Ecuadorian shade grown cigar that's going to be maybe more reminiscent of some of his Cuban projects because his first project was totally different from any of the Cuban cigars that he had blended. Yeah. Uh, this goes to more of that refined medium bodied uh, style but with all the flavor that maybe you're not going to find in some of the Cuban stuff. When that Hamlet cigar first came out you had told me a story uh, about the press release mentioning types of tobacco. Right. I'm not sure if you want to share that yeah. story or not. It it, it was uh, sure we we should share it. It's good. Uh, you know, Hamlet when he sat down at the uh, blending table with just incredible amounts of different tobacco in front of him. You know, whether it was Costa Rican broadleaf or it was San Andreas Maduro or Brazilian Matafina, and Hamlet just started going to work, going to work, going to work, blending, blending, tasting. Well, ultimately, after you know, 30, 40, 50 blends, they arrive at something that they really like. And they got the blend together. He's blending. He's not taking the – I mean, he's putting it together. You know, he's like, I like the way this one tastes. I like the way this one. Well, when they put the press release out, it said that there was Brazilian Matafina. And Hamlet said, there's no Brazilian Matafina. You know, no, absolutely not. And, and sure enough – there was, but he just got so involved in the blending and the taste and just the flavor profile that he was like, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one. And, and so he actually made a call, and you Barry remembers exactly. Yeah, he's like, uh, what are you talking about? Yeah. He just totally blind to what he was using. Yeah. Paid attention to, to the percentages and what have you. He's an artist. But paid no note. You know, he only knew it working Cuban tobacco. Yeah. He didn't realize right. there was all these different types of tobacco. Yeah. Just tobacco, right? So there was Brazilian Matafina. It was in there. And uh, he didn't even realize it was in there because he just liked the taste of this one. He's like an artist. You yeah. Know, remember, this guy's going. It's like, you know, abstract. And I like this. And I like this. And I like this. So it was it was kind of a kind of a cool story. And, and, and you can only imagine a guy that's only one worked with one product which right is kind of one strain of, sure you know oh well, now the whole world is his oh and then he you know so you can imagine so we're really excited for this 25th uh that hamlet's coming out with at the show and i think it's going to be something special all right all right now how's that priced that's going to be right in line with uh uh just below the vintage and uh in line with you know between eight to eight to ten okay in that range yeah all right so we'll look forward to that uh and um so rocky is also uh, all different parts of, of his business that he has. Uh, he's a fighter and he, he big names, brands that are out there. But one of his brands that he has is actually he's a retailer himself and put the Burn Cigar Lounge together. And I, I went a couple of times myself. Oh, my God, if, you know, if he learned anything going around the world or something, he learned how to do it right. And that's how to do a cigar lounge for, for sure. And I understand more plan to be opened up. That's right. That's right. So I... I think the, 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 the thought behind Burn was to, to show folks what the Rocky Patel lifestyle was. And, you know, Rocky's always been a lifestyle brand. Sure. It's a brand that, you know, there's an identity with it. And, 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 and people who know Rocky know what the brand is all about. But if you haven't met Rocky and you just smoke our cigars, maybe you want to see what, what is that Rocky Patel? Like, what, do you, what, is the, what is the company? What is the guy? What's the, who's behind mm. this? So Burn was a, a, a window into what Rocky Patel is all about. And it himself, was the man. showing us the yeah. lifestyle. That's the Rocky Patel lifestyle. This is what the brand is all about. And uh, when you walk into Burn, it's Rocky. Right. You know, you know that. You walk in, it's Rocky Patel, and it's a, it's a, it's a window into what is the Rocky Patel brand, and, and who are these guys? What do they do? And and uh, I think that's uh, that was so so successful with Burn, and, and, and just allowed people to really feel like you know they knew now what what the Rocky Patel brand was all about. Yeah. 
And uh, there are plans for more, and they're more underway. Pittsburgh is coming. That's no secret. Yeah. Let's know it. Uh, Indianapolis is coming. Um, also no secret. And I don't think it's any secret to say that Atlanta is uh, is also uh, okay. in the books. So he ends up teaming up with other retailers, or he's out, I know which is what he did in the first one, but is this with other retailers, or he goes on his own? Uh, these are, I think they'll be Rockies. Just Rockies? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He could he could tell you otherwise, but I... I, I that, that's yeah. the... Uh, yeah. What you can say or what you can't say. Well, that's right. There we go. So I understand. Um, so Rocky, over the years, also has made connections with athletes. And he said, okay, we're going to bring in an athlete, and he'll be the face of line or whatever is that right. continue or yeah uh we work right now with rocco mediate uh rocco is on the senior tour uh, uh obviously P, uh, pga um and, and i think it's always been a nat people who have a natural connection with rocky so plus he, he's big in the sports himself oh he's a big sports yeah. guy he's a football guy he's a packers fan yeah. die 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 hard packers fan um we, we work which is with, where he came from that's right yeah that's right um, so that, that we also work with uh, Gary Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, we make a cigar for Gary. Uh, we make another cigar for Ray Lewis. Um, and these are all guys that are just buddies of Rocky, love yeah. cigars. We were talking about that earlier that, you know, some of these famous people, and I've been with them when it ends up happening, that he's a famous person. And the famous person, Rocky doesn't go up to the famous person. The opposite happens. The famous person goes up to Rocky Patel. We saw it ourselves with the, um, Ben and Jerry. Ben and when Jerry was here, he... Pulled me aside and he goes, Mr. J, can you get me to talk with Rocky? Yeah, and I'm like, you're the most famous ice cream guy in the, on the planet. Yeah. He loves your ice cream, I'm sure. He's going to want to meet you. Yeah. And he's like, no, but no, the I have happens. to meet him. Always. Oh, Even man, politicians, big time politicians. Oh, they end up saying, hey, can you, you know, they hand me the phone. Can I take a picture of him, them with <laughs> Rocky and stuff? You don't want me in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, and, and anytime, you know, you, you learn not to doubt him when he says he knows. Oh, my it's God. like, yeah, yeah, you probably do. And I, I remember standing right there when Jerry was there. And I was like, who's this guy? And all of a sudden, I'm like, Jerry, Ben and Jerry. Oh, Jerry, yeah, yeah we know you. Yeah. And it's a, it's really something. I mean, that's 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 part of uh, you know, it's part of the, the, the lifestyle that you know uh, of the Rockettel brand. And these are our friends. These are the people. And they, who, they live that lifestyle. These they people live, live, live the yep, same lifestyle, live it, right? So uh, Gary and Ray are very very close friends and and, and such. So uh, it was kind of a natural to uh, to just get involved and you know get in the. So you uh, got baseball, you got football, you got, you golf. got golf. Yeah. Anything else? Well, maybe yeah. some other stuff in the works, but you know. Anybody uh, been hanging around the office lately? Yeah, say, that's what that, right? that's, that's what you gotta look for. I, well, actually, something kind of cool yesterday. Uh, LeBron James. Yes, I saw. LeBron James was on Instagram and he was smoking a Java latte of all things. And uh, I think after about what it, it was maybe a video uh, yeah. of him smoking. A video no kidding. Of him. He, he did his own selfie. Video yes. of him smoking a job, smoke. which is pretty obvious. Oh yeah, you it. can't miss it. Right. It's a mile away, and uh, I think you know, in a, in, a, in a day, it had a couple million views, and it's really something. But uh, good ad there. So you yeah, can't buy that. you can't buy that one. Well, can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I wouldn't put it behind. Right. So some of the talk behind the scenes at the trade show is different companies that are in acquisition mode. Do you think that Rocky Patel is? planning at all in positioning himself to purchase other brands because I think it would be difficult and we've talked about this on the show before for another brand to buy Rocky Patel because right now he is the brand but there's nothing stopping him from acquiring other brands you don't have to answer the question if you don't want to but I just want to throw it out there in case we can get you to slip yeah I mean I guess you got to look at why why con companies buy other brands they buy them because they're they're eating their sales, so they want to buy them and close them down. Yeah. Or they buy them because they're just doing so well out there that they want to be associated with it. And I don't know that that's us. I mean, we do our own thing, and uh, I don't know that we're the we're the type to say, yeah, we want to buy this brand, distribute this brand because it's got this or it's got. Yeah, that. Rock will do it himself if he has. Yeah, to. whatever I, he's doing, I can do that. I think Better. I think that's the, and I think that's kind of our mode. Yeah, I mean, somebody's buying somebody because they did better than they did, right? Right. And I and I and I think uh, I think Rocky's the guy that says, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I can do that." And then yeah. we'll, and we'll call it Rocky. I just no. think there's going to be some good deals out there. You're going to have a lot of companies out there looking to bow out, and they have a following. Yeah. And, following, and, and more importantly, 
predicated product, I yeah. think, is something that becomes more and more valuable if the right. FDA regulations don't get eased, right. which it looks like they might. But if they don't, this would be the time to uh, to buy something cheap because if it goes any further and it looks like the FDA regulations stay, right. now the price goes up on those brands. Well, we certainly have a lot of predicated yeah, products, Joe. as you know, you guys know throughout the oh, years. Oh, some of the old names. I look back through old catalogs sure. and stuff. Sure. Old World Reserve, yeah. ITC 10-year, you know, all the winter and seasonal blends. The Fire, blends. horsepower. Oh, you gosh. remember those things? Of course I do. Oh, my the God. The Chimp, the Gorilla. We yes. had them all. Over the years, there's been there's been a lot of blends. If, if there's somebody who has a whole pile of them, and <laughs> yes. when they didn't work out, they didn't work out, and they got pushed aside or whatever. But they're out there, they and out they there. were out there heavy. I mean, there's no problem of saying predicate date and that they were in hundreds and hundreds of stores. You must you must have a favorite. I know you you rep the product, and and so we're only going to talk about the Rocky stuff. But you must have a favorite within all of the Patel lines that yeah. you would find yourself smoking over and over again. You know, when you represent a brand, you end up smoking everything. And, and uh, there, there seems to be a, a time and a place for a different cigar. If it's after a meal or if it's a morning cigar, you know, there's just so many different things that we make. And, and we use some different factories. So we have our factories in Honduras. We have our factories in uh, Nicaragua. We now produce a cigar in the Dominican Republic. So it's like there's a flavor for any time. What are you making day. in the Dominican Republic? We're making our dark Dominican in the Dominican Republic. Oh, that's right. We smoked yeah, that. Yeah. We smoked that. Very good. It's a mild Maduro, a lot of flavor to it, and that's our first project over there. So there's oh. almost something for you know, there's something for uh, any time of the day, really. And it's, uh, I would say, if there were one cigar, I'd probably lean. Uh, it, it's it's oftentimes what's new because I haven't smoked it. Um, but uh, 15th anniversary has always been one that's close yeah. to my uh, heart and lips because it's a good cigar. Yes, really, it is. yeah, makes a lot of great stuff. Edge. I think Edge is something, you know, people will just say Edge, but it's Rocky Patel brand. It's right. Edge, and there's a workhorse of the company, oh, I would guess, right? Absolutely. That's be and you're right. Edge has become its own, you know, it's become its own uh, its own word. You know, yes. it's a Kleenex. It's a yeah. <laughs> cute. It's, it's unbelievable. Edge is a uh, guy walks in and uh, – There's a loyalist. I mean, oh, yeah. your, your Edge customers, your loyal, loyal customers, they really don't bounce around. They're on Edge. There's just a ton of value there. Yeah. It's just a lot of cigar for the money, and it's just uh, – It's, it's the a one brand where no one comes in and says, what do you have that's like this? Yeah. It stands on its own. It's got its own unique flavor profile, and that guy smokes that cigar. He wants to smoke the edge, and that's 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 basically uh, that's basically that guy, and he loves it. And when we make you know five different wrappers in it now because there's been such a loyal following. That's why you had Corojo and Maduro. We followed up with Sumatra, and then you came out with Habano, and then we've got the Connecticut. So – you know, there's uh, there's an edge for almost anybody. And, and right. It's, it's its own category. Any, really new, any new edge? Um, not right now. No? Okay. You know, maybe we should touch the bases someday with like an edge Cameroon or something. I mean, that's one that's not out there. There it is. It's like a whole different brand edge. Okay, that's the time we have. Max Bickler, thank you so much for joining us. When we come back, new cigars coming out at the IPCPR. You heard three from Max. We got a whole bunch more. The big list. We're going to reveal them. We're just a few days away from everybody finding out, and we're going to tell you today. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars as Raffio Nodel has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Raphael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera. It will have you calling for an encore.
In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailer shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soil of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at TwoGuysCigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Mattel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named the Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Loto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Loto de Oro, creating a medium to full body, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. It was 2010 on my 50th birthday. Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars showed up in my office and honored me with a gift. It was a box of cigars. But this box of cigars was not what I expected, one I never saw before, something without the Perdomo name on it. It was my name, Garofalo. Garofalo Cigars has my name on it, but it was blended and created by Perdomo as a gift, a gift of a brand of cigars. So what should you expect from a Garofalo cigar? Rich layers of complex flavors, but often in a mild to medium body profile. 
a blend comprised of fine Cuban seed Nicaraguan tobaccos, including a triple fermented five year aged Connecticut shade wrapper. I'm honored to have Garofalo, my name, surrounding such a wonderful cigar. I would be honored if you would give a Garofalo cigar a try. Garofalo cigars, an honor. This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. Just too far. Yeah. It's too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. We got to keep our composure. With your host, the other. David Garofalo. Count of three. Name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One, two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Barry Stone. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere. I'm a former grangekeeper now. I'm about to become the Masters Champion. It's time to light them up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good housekeeping. For the Cigar Authority. Can we just become best friends? Yep. And we are back with our number two broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Stown stage. Heading out to the IPCPR tomorrow. And the rumor mill is already in full gear. What's coming out? Today we're going to reveal that. What we know. Welcome back everybody to the second hour of the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority podcast, broadcasting over eight years now, and the longest continually running cigar podcast. Voted the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Voted top ten educational podcast by Podbean four in a row, four years in a row, and now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority <coughs> is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. So uh, the next cigar we're going to light up is something that's going to be really showcased at the IPCPR show at the new Royal Agio booth. This is, I mentioned earlier, Royal Agio is a company, a uh, big European company that makes Panther, Agio, Balmoro, uh, and other cigar brands. For years, they were distributed by the folks at Drew Estates. Correct. Uh, they'll still be at the show this year, but they have their own booth, and they'll be highlighting this exact cigar. This is the Balmoral Anejo XO, and specifically the Lancero FT. And this is a cigar you will n not be able to buy anymore. This is only a gift when you actually make your purchase from them. You'll be able to get this as a gift. And the FT means fancy tail. It's a Lancero with a fancy tail. And each box is going to be uh, autographed by the owner of the company, Boris Winterman. And um, that's the way of you Of Henry Winterman fame? Of the family. No kidding. Of that family. This is a royal family. When I say royal, they are royalty. Real royalty company. Barry, what do you know about this? Well, Balmoro comes from us from Royal Agio, who's been in business since the early 1900s. And the cigar was blended, as you mentioned, by Boris Winterman. And it's covered with a sun-grown Ari Paraca wrapper. The Inejo XO Cigar has been rewarded with many prestigious awards from all over the world. Balmoro Inejo XO Cigars are the result of an intensive blending process with exceptionally aged tobaccos, which brings this cigar to a high level of complexity and character. And it measures 7 by 40 and it has a retail of 1350 And that's what we know about. Do you think they could knight me? If I became because they're friends royalty, with them, can they do it? I don't could know. they make me Maybe. a knight? I'm going to try to become friends with them. I would like to become there. Sir Mr. Jonathan. So I know this cigar because I had this cigar once before. My friend Mike Cusano, who used to own Cusano Cigars before selling off to Davidoff, he was a distributor for Royal Agio for years. Um, then when he sold out, the distribution went to Davidoff and then later to Drew Estates. And now it, it'll be their own. And when he was celebrating his birthday, and it might have been his, his 50th birthday, maybe, um, they made this his birthday cigar. No kidding. And uh, I smoked a cigar with him, and it was a big deal. And um, they, they put this out for a brief amount of time, and now it's only going to be as the special uh, special cigars. It has a little football band on it. Anejo meaning aged. I believe that's what it translates yeah. to. XO, uh, Lancero, FT. FT is the fancy tail. It's the little fan head on the Lancero. Not to be confused with the Lancero regular? Yeah, it wouldn't have the fancy tail. Okay. Um, I don't know if they have a non-FT. 
uh, one of it. Balmoral's been out for a long, long time. Uh, more Again, more in Europe than anywhere else, but here they come uh, uh, strongly into the U.S. market. So it's going to be interesting what they're going to showcase, what they have to say. Uh, they have a whole new sales team, their own everything. Uh, watch this company. That's all I can say about it is watch this company. So let's give it a cut and light, see what it's all about. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo was the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So the cold drawer on this cigar, without a doubt, is Sunflower Seeds. Berry <laughs> without a doubt. I'm getting a little... I, I, I love when he, when he pumps peach. it up himself. Like, don't, don't even mm. argue with me. Peach Barbecue. What I'm getting. Yeah, no. Salted sunflower seeds? 100%. Do you, do you eat the whole sunflower seed? Not after no. I found out the uh, uh, story of somebody. Put yeah. the whole seed in my mouth, crack it, take the seeds, put yeah. the casing. I did it for years and years. You know, the most famous sunflower seed is the David sunflower seed. And I would eat the whole thing and cut my mouth and everything doing it. It's all part of the um, and then experience. It was my friend Nick Perdomo who had a bad episode eating a bag of sunflower seeds. Serious blockage. It's a whole thing. Let him tell you the story. It's funny as hell, but it was hell. Oh, it yeah. wasn't funny while it was going on, I'm sure. But uh, what a story he's got with sunflower seeds. And now, and I still eat a couple of them, the whole thing, mm -hmm. but I won't eat a bag that way. It's just tempting fate. But the sunflower seed is a good diet food. Because there's so much work to get a seed. Yep, that you get fed up with it. Yeah. All right, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not hungry anymore. Yeah, yeah. Screw this. <laughs> it's a good diet snack. Um, sunflower seed or pumpkin seed? What do you prefer best? Sunflower seed. Yeah, I like a pumpkin seed, here. though. You know, it's a little rubbery, though. Yes. But, yeah. You but, cook them just right. They get a little crunch to them. Yeah, you cook them. Speaking of cooking things just right. <laughs> yeah. You could cook a lot of sunflower or pumpkin seeds with this Vertigo Equalizer. Because it's got a single action. It's got four jets, and it's fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. It also features a flip-out bullet punch. The Vertigo Equalizer retails for $19.99. This could be a $30 lighter all day long. I'm dying to see what they're coming out with. Mm. Really, one, one of my uh, most exciting things is going over to that booth and see the new things they have because they've done it all. How can they come out with something? And the next thing you know, there it is. This and is they don't have predicate date issues. I mean, they, the sky's the limit for right. lighters. So, not a Lancero fan. I feel um, dainty. Yeah, good word. <laughs> good, good word for it. You, you, just my, you know, I don't know what to do with my hands holding this. It's it's like smoking a fat cigarette. So maybe, yeah, maybe I used to be a cigarette smoker. Maybe that's why I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, don't go there. And uh, I wasn't going uh -uh. anywhere penis related. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm a huge fan of the Lancero and the Corona. You know that. Um, just doesn't sell much on the retail level. No, it, it's kind of elegant to hold, but it does, just doesn't feel like a real cigar to me. I'll say at 40 ring gauge, it is drawing better than I expected. Perfect draw from a Lancero. And I think that's the secret. So a lot of people do the 38 ring gauge, but just bumping up one ring gauge. Two. Well, I, I don't know over 39, so, but bumping up to 40 just seems to be the secret because I've smoked a few of these already. They stay lit. They have great draws. You're not going to smoke any more because no, this no. is the last yep. three. Back years ago, yep. there was a 39 ring gauge Lancero. It was the My Father Black Edition Lancero, and that was 39 ring gauge. Yeah. Just saying. Picking it up a little bit. Um, we will get more of these because I am going to buy in so we can get them. And not that Lancero sell big. I'm buying in anyway. This is a company, again... Uh, you retailers that are listening, this is a company to watch. Don't miss out. Big on moves it. are going to happen. Yeah, I think things are happening. Um, so speaking of big things that are happening, um, you know, last week we did the firecracker and we asked you in a poll mm -hmm. of uh, who should we at be asking uh, to do the next cigar. We're going to let the cat out of the bag. We, we are. So uh, everybody was in at. At the at, at a low, I won't say the name the names of the company. The low was 7.14. A lot of people in 12s. We had a 15, 17, and then somebody came in at 34.29. Oh, 
and that's out of three, six different companies that here. 30, mm. 35% roughly of everybody. Almost two to one on the person next closest. Yeah, yeah. Um, was the company that um, you guys spoke. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in. This is the perfect timing because tomorrow's the day. We're flying out there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to them and uh, see if I can make the deal happen. And it's going to be uh, Dunbot Tobacco and Trust, our friend Steve Saka. He's a big – he's been on the show more than anybody else. Yeah. He's, a, he's a local favorite anyway, and uh, that's who they picked. Um, and if he's willing to do it, um, the interesting thing will be we're using the same factory twice because Dunbot and Tobacco was made at Hoya de Nicaragua where Fratello was made this year. Right. So the factory knows what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they'll be the one making the shape or they have the right thing to end up doing it. But this is, uh, you know, we, we let the, uh, the fans of the show dictate this call. But uh, the, as I say, the timing is perfect because I'm going to go there day one. Say, are we in? Is this happening or not? If he says no, we're going to number two. I think you'll know number two is because number two's taking it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. uh, the I think if you voted for Saka to have it, and since he won, you you should at least get two boxes. And if you voted and you lost, the cons consolation prize is you buy one box. You know, we limit we limit two boxes right. per person. Uh, but we'll we'll see how it plays out. So let, let's get to the big list. The big list of new cigars uh, and things we're going to see at the IPCPR trade show. And this will all start for us tomorrow. We're going to hit the floor. Even though the doors don't open for regular people, we'll be there. We have badges. Um, so as we say, Rocky Patel, they come out with the 2006 the San Andreas 11-year uh, new vintage. You know it's going to be a winner. Uh, of course. Uh, that's a guarantee for us. Himmler, 25 years. We'll see uh, what kind of play that has. The Rocky Patel Java Red, interesting. Java continues to sell. That's I a think beast. Uh, in, uh, with, with cherry and chocolate, like a cordial type of cigar. We'll see where that goes. We heard on the show uh, a couple weeks ago when Serena was here, the Wayfair. Yep, which I, I got right? to smoke it in all three sizes. I think that cigar is a home run. Okay, that's made at the La Corona factory. Uh, that's Carson and the son of the blender there. Yep. Uh, the two sons working on that cigar. Next one is very curious to me. Yeah. Because they don't make cigars typically this small. Yes. And I'm dying for it. I, I want to try it because I think it's going to be like the middle part, uh, the early part of the 1895. That's right. Which That's is what the I'm best thinking part. too. Correct. It's the best part. This looks like a winner to me. And Corona's aren't all that big. But this is the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar Corona. It might be the best tasting Julius Caesar out there. I am dying to try it. The whole thing will tough, be there. It's going to be tough to beat that 1895 Perfecto, but that one's on my radar. And the price should, should be good. It'll be yeah. a good entry level into the, the Julius Caesar. I'm looking forward to it, too. Mm -hmm. Our friends at La Flor Dominicana have a bunch coming out. Uh, La Granu Oscuro Natural. Yep, which is... I I think it was something old is now something new. Okay. It's La Granu. I think that's right. Okay. Uh, La Volcada. Yep. I can't even speak English. So you're I know. Asking I'm, the wrong I'm looking guy. at you. But it sounds right. It sounds good. La Volcada. Then they're, they're reissuing the next one. Factory Press. They've come out with it year after year after year. Yeah. So you got that's something you got to go. When you go into the trade show, you go to the trade show, and you go to the booth day one, or else they, you, you go on day two, and they say, you say, oh, Factory Press. And they go, yeah, it's also a so you show up if you if you're interested in factory press and it's a little different each time you go and show up there. Uh, back to a small cigar. Here is the Flor de Minicana taking the Lenox, huge winner, yeah. huge, uh, and making a petite version it of it. It was available in five count packs, but now it's going to be available in a fifty count box. There we go. So I think that's a winner. It's also. one of those cigars you get a handful of. If you like Lenox, you get a handful, and this is your quick hitter, especially in the winter time. Walking so the dog. Here is a. Small cigars. You're seeing small cigars yep. popping up here. So Jeez, are we going to see a whole show of a whole, you know, it was like the first year we showed up and all the 60 ring gauges were every year and you go, what the hell is going on here? Do they know something is happening? Or is it going to be that somebody hears something about someone coming out with a small cigar and so they follow suit hoping that the trend catches on? I don't know. Small ring gauges. It's a big risk. Here we are smoking a 40 ring gauge right now. And loving it. Speaking of small ring gauges, when you get through the next list, I have an addition at the end of it. Okay. 
Uh, Drew Estates. Drew Estates is coming with the acid green Cuba Cuba Candela. Look. <laughs> I don't. Could this be because another company came out with a Candela that's an infused cigar? Maybe. Maybe a little slap back. Um, acid Blondie Candela. Jeez, you wouldn't think. I don't know. I'm so the wrong guy for, for yeah. both of those. Uh, then again, you're talking the, the Blondie and the Cuba Cuba, which is the two biggest selling of all Drew Estate sizes. Yeah. They're putting in a Candela version. Even if it sells a little, it's going to sell a lot. Right. Uh, acid Blondie Red and Acid Blondie Gold. Now, here we are with colors the same way Rocky Patel is doing. Mm -hmm. So the I'm going to venture a guess that the red is going to follow suit with the Java and go cherry, and that the gold is gold schlager, and that it's cinnamon. That's just my guess. Well, let's I see. I don't know for sure. All right. Um, in Undercrown, they have a sun-grown, so Undercrown it's a natural, right? Right. They had the regular Undercrown, which was very dark. They put the, the shade yeah. one out, so here's the sun-grown. And grown. it now becomes a patriotic brand because you have the blue, the original, the white, and the uh, natural, and the Undercrown, sun-grown will be red. Going after my firecracker. So red, white, right? and blue. There we go. And... Uh, but although they don't have gold, they got green on this. Maybe that's next, the Candela version coming out. Uh, Debonair Daybreak. I have had samples of that. I have not. Yeah, we, we all did. We all did. We did it on the show. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That was so – all right. All right. When yes, the, yes. The, to beat out the <clears throat> FDA yep. thing and all that stuff. Yes. Which he said, I wish you didn't do that because it's not perfect or whatever it was. It was pretty damn it good was to begin good. with. And that's a go-to yes. for me. You know, I feel so bad that he's an advertiser, he's a friend. Um, All around great guy. But Debonair is too full-bodied for me. It just is. It's so heavy. And he said, here's the daybreak. I'm going to come out with it. I asked him day one, the first time I ever had a Debonair, uh, that you should make a milder version of this so I can enjoy it. And here it is. So I'm really looking forward to that. What yep. Also, uh, every Brent, 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 the Blend. Say it. See, I can't speak English. So every blend that Drew Estate makes will be coming out in a 10 count tin of mixed fill. Yes. So there'll yeah. be the Liga Provada mixed fill. There'll be the Underground mixed fill. Acid mixed fill. Yeah, and this yeah, is yeah. part of Swish's thing. Yes. You know, a mass volume type of thing. So uh, that makes sense that that, that ends doing it. La Aurora, time capsules. And we received them Yep, already. we got them in already. They're available at twoguyscigars.com. Now here is a... A cigar that comes in two di three different wrapper colors, mm -hmm. Connecticut, Corojo, and Cameroon. Yep. Cameroon, very interesting. Very interesting. I like that Cameroon a lot. Yeah. And it is, it is a good value. Very good value. Yeah. So there's a value cigar brand out there with La Aurora. Uh, La Galera coming out with Gordos across the board. Yep. So here's going to the bigger size cigars. United Cigar in the Atabay line, they're coming out with five new sizes. Mm -hmm. I tried the Lancero. I tried the Torpedo. I don't know which one's which over here. The Spiritus is the Lancero. Okay. Uh, and three other sizes. So they had four sizes, and here is five more. So we're talking about a brand what of nine. What about all the other ones that were in the tubes? I was thinking he's, he's totally take, gone out of left field on this. Yeah. I was expecting the tube ones to come out in those sizes. Another cigar that's going to be interesting is Doss Ombre Cabinet Selection. Doss Ombre Cabinet Selection. And if you live in a high-tax state, that's something you definitely want to look at. Look at that. It is uh, the versions uh, they'll be selling right off the bat are going to be the Honduran version and the Dominican version. This is a cigar that comes in a 20-count box, and they're priced in the $5 price mm -hmm. range across the board. And every cigar is actually pre-priced. Like the old days when you get a box of cigars, you look at the old ones and it say five cents on it. This will actually say five dollars on it. And how could that be? Because every state is a different tax within those states. But every cigar will be five dollars, whatever price it is, depending on size. In every state, it will be the same exact price because the United Cigar people will be giving free product out to the taxed state to offset to offset the taxes so no matter Paying where you tax. go if you're buying the robusto at five dollars and you go to california at 65 percent tax it's five dollars in california and you go to new hampshire with a zero tax it's five dollars in new hampshire it's a level playing field across the board and this is on dos ombre uh so uh, we'll see that there davidoff uh the ritmo south uh, american they have camacho nicaraguan barrel aids the davidoff 
Escurio, Nicaraguan, Box Press, and Yamasa, all 60 ring games yep, across the board. Limited production on those. And um, this is this is the one that I smoked and thought it was an unbelievable cigar. The Davidoff Winston Churchill, The Last Hour. Very good. Yep, the idea of this cigar is Winston Churchill, at the end, he's a guy that didn't sleep very much, much like a Donald Trump type of character, that Winston Churchill, his last hour, when everybody was sleeping, Nobody calling and nobody talking to him. He'd like this last cigar. The last hour would be with this cigar. Kind of a very fuller bodied Davidoff cigar. If it didn't have a Davidoff band on it, probably the last thing you'd think of it was a Davidoff. But it's elegant. It's fantastic. This is a go to for me. I'm looking forward to, to getting uh, to it. Altadas. Altadas has the, um, and boy, this show's going to go long, huh? Yes. Got a lot of them here. Altadas H. Upman. Uh, by A.J. Fernandez, Monty by A.J. Fernandez, Monte Cristo by A.J. Fernandez. And then we find out that they buy A.J. Fernandez <laughs> yeah, at the end it, of it. It looks like a lock and load here, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, and Aging Room, that's them doing the Aging Room. Me, Taria? Tierra. Me, Tierra. Uh, Crown Heads, uh, Four Kicks, Mule Kicks, 2017. And the other one is a new line. It starts with the letter F. I think it's the Four Kicks Medoro, which they've been hyping up lately. Like, yeah. Like, yep. But Four Kicks was made not by my father's cigars. We know my father is making this. True. One. It's the F word. It's not the Medoro. True. But there's also they also have the Four Kicks Medoro that has been hyped up. Yeah. <clears throat> but this is the F word. We'll see what that becomes. Dunbot and Tobacco and Trust. Todos los días. Thank you. And uh, Mutra de Sacas, what? Nakatamali. Nakatamali. How the hell did you figure that one out? Uh, tamale. It's food-based. Food-based. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Fratello has the what? That's Italian. I'm going to defer to you on that. Navetta? Navetta. Navetta means <clears throat> shuttle in Italian because he did the space shuttle thing. Silver band, Oscuro wrapper. We'll see what that's all about. My father, Vegas Cubana, comes back. Vegas Cubana. Mm -hmm. uh, Tatuaje has the uh, bride for the Halloween of 2017, the Michael in tattoo needles. Yeah. Little thin ring gauge yeah, cigars. Yeah, like 4x28 or 4 by 32 All right. So we're seeing something here. We're seeing something. Smaller ring gauge. Roma Craft. I'm unhappy about this one. Neanderthal line extension. He can't keep up with regular Neanderthal, and he's going to use that tobacco and come out with line extensions. That he's not going to sell in the United States. Do you I'm know that? I'm going to show it at the show, but we can't buy it. It's for the German market oh. because you can't bring something new in. So here's where the problem arises. Foundation Cigars, Nick Melillo, coming out with what? High Claire. High Claire Castle, which is the name of the castle in the TV show Downtown Abbey. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Made by A.J. Fernandez. Yes. Speaking of A.J. Fernandez, who's doing cigars for everybody but himself. No, he's not. The New World Puro Especial. Uh, and you'll have it in the news, but uh, Booth Caldwell, A.J. Fernandez, mm -hmm. uh, and he'll talk about that. I'll take your thunder away from that. General Cigar, La Gloria Cubana Collection Reserve. Mm -hmm. I was happy to see the name of this. Mm -hmm. La Gloria Cubana Collection Reserve because last time it was reunited, mm -hmm. and united is a united cigar. It's not right and uh, feels so good. Uh, anything? You've got problems. That's which I'm one of say. you is peaches and which one of you is herb? There we go. Uh, but this but that's Gloria another... Cubana will not be distributed by EPC, but made by EPC and distributed by General Cigar. So is General Cigar going to buy him a second time is the question. Which I've been saying for a year now. You've been saying it a little longer than that. Longer than a year. Yeah. So I don't know. What's the hold up here? Viaje White Label Pin Pina. 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 Sounds small. Pina, right? Uh, zombie Super Shop and the Antidote. Antidote Returns. Yep. yep. Alec Bradley. Illict. Illicit. Illicit. Tough words. Yeah, part of the black label line. Okay. Oliva. Go ahead. Uh, it used to be called Facundo, but it got renamed to Gilberto. Oh, uh, that's the same cigar. Same cigar. Uh, Bacardi sued them over the name, uh, so they just renamed it. Gilberto. Gilberto, which is the Gilberto Oliva. That's an old, old brand, mm -hmm. man. I carried that mm -hmm. back in the day of the cigar boom. Mm -hmm. uh, Polina, Espinosa Reggae, uh, the Reggae Dreads, mm -hmm. which is like firecracker ends, mm -hmm. but they're tied together. Yep. Uh, Villager is launching Fleur de, Fleur de Incline. 
Um, that was an old brand. brand they yep. bring them back. Actually looks nice. Um, Warped has the Grand Reserve of 1988. Um, Fleur de Crossier. Crossier, number 560. Mm-hmm. And Hoy de Nicaragua with an Antonio Grand Reserve. Like One thing not on the list is, and it seems interesting to me, it's Hanky. And it's going to be made at the Keltner Boutique Factory. It's going to be blended by Hanky Kellner with tobacco from his daughter Monica's farm and made at the Sons Factory. Yeah, nice. And it's going to be spelled H-E-N-K-I-E. And which yes. is his nickname. Yeah. Okay, and which we'll, I've always seen it without the I. And uh, so that's going to be released at the show. Okay, and and distributed by KBF, not his, Davidoff, right? His son. Okay, all right. Doesn't so Davidoff a, distribute that? The um, KBF brand. I'm not sure. Not. A, I don't think anymore. No. So it's a family because he was he. They were showing his products at the show a couple of years ago. All right, quickly, Barry. What's up in the cigar world? It's time for what's, what's up? up in the cigar world. Brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. Well, we alluded to this a couple of times in the show, and Matt Booth of Room 101 fame is back in the game, teaming up with Robert Caldwell and A.J. Fernandez for The Truth, which will be made at the A.J. Fernandez factory. In addition, Booth and Caldwell will also release Hit and Run, but that will be made in the Dominican Republic at the Ventura Cigar Factory, and both cigars are expected to retail at 10 to $13. Oregon is expected to become the third state to raise the tobacco age to 21, as the bill has passed the House and Senate, and Governor Kate Brown has already voiced support and is expected to sign the bill into law this week. And lastly, the state of Delaware is raising their tobacco tax by 100% from 15% of the wholesale price to 30% starting September 1st. And that's what's up in the cigar world. What's up in the cigar world was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian Broadleaf filler tobaccos which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Reclu Cigars is What's, what's up? up? Watch for our daily coverage of the IPCPR. We're going to have it on. We're going to be throwing this stuff out to Barry. You're going to be watching a lot of stuff coming in. And next week's show, we're going to do live from the IPCPR trade show. And Barry will put all those uh, things together, and yeah. uh, we'll see how, how that plays out. Right now, uh, it's time for the Don Raphael offer of the day. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? $500. $500. Not a lot, but an easy three-minute gig. Three-minute comedy stand-up act at a packed comedy club. You get up there, you do three minutes on the stage. Hell yeah. I'll bomb, but I'll do it. $500. Yeah, you didn't say I had to kill it, so I'll go up and do do the best best I can. 500 bucks. You don't know the people. You just get up on the stage. Just do it. There's nothing tougher in the world. Nothing. I can go up on the stage, but I ain't getting up there for three minutes and trying to make people laugh. Not for 500. I think I have the material to do it, but I don't have the balls to do it. You would not do it. It took me a long time just to be able to speak in front of our studio audience. Yeah. Forget about a packed room. So, no. Most people are going to be no. They would rather be. I'm so in. Yeah, no I problem. I would love it. Even if I bombed, I would love it. You do it. Well, would you do it for free? Go to an open mic night and just go up there and do it? Probably not. No, you there need needs to be to some sort of dare or incentive. All right, so your thoughts here on the Balmoro, Anejo, Exo, Lancero. Early thoughts here. I'm surprised at how cool it's burning. Mm. It has a very familiar flavor. It's a, a little mm. on the umami side. That musty quality to it. Not a lot of spice, a little mm-hmm. sweetness. Very woodsy. Yeah. Uh, yeah great draw. Um, you know, I just had to re- relight it yeah. from worrying about the board. It burns really well. Mm. Um, you enjoyable. ever eaten a pine needle? I don't mean the little ones. I mean the long ones. 
They, I've never eaten it, but I You can make tea out of it. Very high in vitamin C. But if, so if you ever walk in the woods, and grab the high ones because no one can pee on the high ones. Make but, it a neat thing of a tea. You won't eat a yodel, but you're big in the pine needles, huh? Love the pine needles. High in vitamin C. I learned that on Bear Grylls' show. There we go. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Gentleman Chuck is still gone. But we got a classic three-way champion to be made. We don't have a, a winner yet. Uh, we, we had a poll. We gave you the winner of the firecracker. We did that already. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Smokey Joe's is changing the dress code when it comes to enjoying a premium handmade cigar. Using the finest materials of velvet and silk, their smoking jackets are made for a lasting impression. Smokey Joe's has fitted the likes of Smokey Robinson, James Brown, Sammy Davis Jr., and now they want to fit you too with a smoking jacket. Proudly designed and manufactured in the USA, Smoky Joe's invites you to feel the inspiration of fashion from an era where clothing was designed using only the finest materials and craftsmanship. Smoky Joe's clothing continues to be a story of America at its best. Innovation, hard work, and fearless enterprise. When you light up the best, smoke it while wearing the best. Smoking Joe's Smoking Jackets. Available at SmokyJoe'sClothing.com. That's SmokyJoe'sClothing.com. Be sure to tell them the Cigar Authority sent you. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar. Imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range. That's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider cigars. There's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars and the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavana number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Founded in 1989 by Mariana and Nestor Miranda, Miami Cigar and Company proudly celebrates their 25th anniversary with the release of their flagship brand, the Nestor Miranda Collection. Made in Esteli, Nicaragua by Don Pepin Garcia, the collection is available in three distinct wrappers aimed to please even the toughest critic. Nestor Miranda Collection. You only get one life. How will you live yours? Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, 
Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers, the mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose in 1848, in honor of the English poet Lord Byron, a cigar brand named Byron was first created. Through three centuries, Byron has gone through many hands, but today it is back with the family that first created them. Returning to the early days, now the brand, in a very limited quantity, is produced in a small factory in Costa Rica. Nelson Alfonso offers three Byron blends honoring all three centuries of Byron, Siglo 19, Siglo 20, and Siglo 21. Other cigars sit in an aging room for 60 days, but every Byron cigar sits in an aging room for a period of at least one full year, then and only then, into ultra-luxurious porcelain jars and state-of-the-art cigar humid tubes packaging. Sure, Byron's packaging is unique and costly to produce, but nothing else will do for a cigar of this quality and taste. Byron Cigars. Cigars of poetry. Sophisticated. Byron. This is Hank Kellner and my son. Plus Peter Kellner, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigars Retailers Radio Network. And we are back, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Set. Gentlemen, Jonathan's going to do it debonair style as Barry gets crazy in the asylum, and we'll find out who the winner will be in the classic three-way. We have no champion. It's gentleman Chuck Morrison still, so he's not forgotten. As a result of some very undebonair. Cheating. I don't know about on. that at all. So we're smoking the Balmoral and AO Exo Lancero. It will be at the IPCPR trade show at the Royal Agio booth. But in order to get it, you have to be given it. It will be autographed by Boris Winterman. It's going to be the big deal at their booth. Uh, you don't buy it, you receive it. You receive I like it. it. Yeah? I like it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to try to be knighted yeah? this year's show. See if you can do it. Um, Okay, so right now it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha-ha! It's time for news from the insane asylum, odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? <clears throat> Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoner. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. If you are a fan of ultimate fighting, then this story won't make you hit the brakes and leave a skid mark on the pavement. But for those of you who don't know, UFC fighter Justine Cush had an unfortunate accident much like many a toddler. During her fight with Felice Herrick, Cush was in the process of being choked out when she lost control of her bowels oh. and defecated inside the octagon. There is a silver lining to all of this, or is that a brown lining? Oh. The mixed martial arts fighter is in negotiations with various baby wipes manufacturers, and according to Cush, she's considering accepting an offer and making a commercial to make the product less embarrassing and more funny. Of course, there's nothing funnier than the fact that her own Mr. Jonathan prefers baby wipes after his number two. That's not only insane, it's asylum. They're coming to take me away. Why is he going to air my dirty laundry like that? Go. Oh, 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 <laughs> the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. If you want a clean tush, you got to do what tush or something. There's something there. Yeah, kush, 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 kush right? I can uh, write it. I need about five minutes. I keep it kush. Together. So we're smoking a Balmoro Lancero. FT, fancy tail. I'm not hating it. It's the best I'm going to get is I'm not <laughs> hating it because it has plenty of flavor. It does For have lots little, of flavor, yeah. A little thin 40 ring gauge. There's a lot of flavor going on. A lot of smoke comes out. Have you smoked the other sizes? Yes, I like the Robusto. You the like Basque. the regular size, yeah. but it's the size that's a little bit of a 
usually on the Lancero, it's all funneled in so and it gets hot, but it's not. It's burning. No, it's good. burning very cool. I'm just past the halfway mark. I'm a little ahead of both of you, and I'm getting some uh, dark roasted coffee notes. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I get coffee it. Coffee taste. So they are already. Oh, can we uh, address a text message that Barry sent me? Sure. Oh, geez. Because. <laughs> No, this is rich. You know, I, I break your balls uh, uh, all the time, and I wanted to say something nice to you, but go for it. Out of nowhere, he says, I appreciate you. Just felt like being debonair before you get debonair tomorrow. Out of nowhere. Just sends me a text message, so I sent back, Pete, quit messing around and get to work. You leave Barry's phone alone. And he said, no, it was me. I appreciate you. Every yeah. once in a while, when I, when I bust him really bad on you. I'm hot on you for something. You go, you know, I appreciate you. You do say that, right? <laughs> I say it to you, but yeah. I wasn't breaking his chops like at all. like the weirdest thing that I'm, I, I'm I yelling like, at him for something. He goes, I appreciate you. It's like, I, I like do. The what new, do you say? You're stuck. In, all right, go I ahead. I like the new Debonair Jonathan. All right, let's see what he's got right now. While you're enjoying life, just close to the purport to be Debonair. How to be more Debonair and gentleman-like is Gentleman Jonathan. You need a gentleman? Gentleman. Gentleman, you need a gentleman. <laughs> you wouldn't want to call me gentleman. Ladies, fasten your seat belts, switch on your electronic devices, and pump up the volume. You need a gentleman. And this is the Gentleman's Way, brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. Debonair provides its clients with suspension of reality. Time smoking a debonair can never be subtracted from one's life. Boys, it's grilling season, and we could be invited to a barbecue at any given weekend. And here is a way to always be considered debonair. Cigars, wine, and liquor all range from cheap to pricey. Though barbecues often lend themselves to lower budget consumption, if you know you will be offered or have access to something high-end like an 18-year-old single malt, maybe a Padron 1926, or a 99-rated... 1978 blah 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 wine you should come packing with something high end of your own to share with the host if you get surprised by your host with something much higher end than you brought the debonair play is to step your game up next time the rule of reciprocity should always apply life won't always be tit for tat and many people and people may not always take care of you but a gentleman always brings his a-game when it comes to reciprocation the question is are you debonair or not. And he doesn't take it with him once he leaves. Absolutely. <laughs> See, I had a feeling that you guys weren't going to be debonair on yeah. that, and I laid up a softball for you, and you both failed the debonair test. Ah, uh, No, I stepped my game up. It's tough, though, when you go to where we're about to go to. So I get a text while we're on the show right now, and I know they're listening, obviously, but it's the people from Royal Agio. We are at the Encore tower at the encore suites and we are invited we are invited we are invited all right well thank you for the invite huh? folks, and and we'll be happy to and they're listening. They're and listening. hopefully they have their sword with them and they can knight you yes that's what i want more than anything is to be knighted and i have to call you sir god damn it that's yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. it's time for the classic three-way brought to you by classic cigars you've heard of Epic rap battles. <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. I don't tell anyone about this. I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In classic history. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic. And every cigar is priced under, get this, under Three dollars per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from. Yeah. Choose any blend, including the classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot. Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. We have no champion, but I have a couple of extras in case we're going to get a champion today. And out of the studio audience, we're bringing Frank in. Frank is a studio audience participant often and a fan and friend of the show. Frank, thanks for joining us. 
Thanks for having me, dude. Okay, so we're going to start with Mr. Jonathan. We'll move down to Barry, and we'll go to Frank, and then we'll move it from that point. You know how it works, right? Closest without going over. Today, July 8th, Mr. Jonathan. Today is the birth date of John D. Rockefeller, entrepreneur, billionaire, and co-founded Standard Oil Company uh, and the formidable U.S. Business Trust. He's notable philanthropist. He often considered the wealthiest person in history, even after adjustments and before inflation. John D. Rockefeller, born today, what year? 1799. 1799. 1900. 1900. 1907. 1907. 1799. Takes it, Mr. Jonathan. 18, 1839. Mr. Jonathan gets the point. Over to Barry Stein. Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Six prolific. degrees of separation. TV film actor who became known for his role in Footloose, Apollo 13, won a Golden Globe Award for his role in River Wild. Also, other films include Hallow Men, Mystic River, Friday the 13th, Tremors. Long list of credits and various genres inspired the trivia game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Give me a side of eggs with that. Kevin Bacon, born today, what year? 1967. 67. 68. 68. 54. 54 for the point, Mr. Jonathan. 58. That's how it's done. And over to Frank, Toby Keith. Toby Keith is a country singer, songwriter, producer, and actor who was named Country Music Awards Entertainer of the Year. He debuted, his debut hit was Should Have Been a Cowboy. Should have been a cowboy. Toby Keith, born today, what year? Drawing a blank here, I'll say 1970. 70. Uh, should have learned to rope and ride in 1957. 57. 72. 72. Mr. Jonathan's on a tear. He says 57 at 61. You guys keep just going over. You can't help you as much longer. Two points for an exact hit. Somebody wants to end up getting some exact yeah, hits. Yeah, th this is where he's going to keep going until you guys catch me because he's already, he's already passed what he was planning on asking. Mr. Jonathan Wolfgang Puck. Australian chef who became a celebrity favorite in Hollywood's famed restaurant Spago. Film television credits include Wolfgang Puck's Cooking Clash, The Smurfs, Food Fight, also called the greatest chef in the world. You've eaten at this restaurant. We'll probably eat again at this restaurant. That's correct. When we go down there, what is a cut? Um, I'm going to go with 1941. 41. 47. 47. 44. 44. And Barry Stein, you get a point. 49. He says 47, 49. I'm out of stuff. Yes. <laughs> we have a champion. It's Mr. Jonathan. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Brought to Crush you by was too Classic much. Cigars. Find Classic Cigars at your favorite brick and mortar retailer. Or find it at the IPCPR if you're a retailer who doesn't carry it. And if you're a retailer not going to the trade show, what are you kidding me? There's time. There's still time for you. That's all I can say. But what there isn't time of is a lot of time left on the show. you got a mailbag to get to, Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. Get to it. Uh, this is uh, coming by way of the Two Guys Cigars website, believe it or not. Uh, apparently, this person doesn't know about the Contact Us page on CigarAuthority.com. But uh, longtime listener of the Cigar Authority podcast. I've been binge listening on my recent road trip. I've listened, I listened to the Cigar 101 Plus edition and wanted to thank Barry for explaining the retro hill. Yes. I got it, and I'm still practicing it. Good. It takes the cigar experience to the next level. Also, to David for explaining the proper way to light a cigar. It sure makes a difference. Thanks for teaching and entertaining me. Keep up the great work. And that is uh, C. Bader. If you don't retro hell, you I definitely... Just, I just did it, but I got that feeling. You're but cheating I got... yourself. So I did that. Wow, you get a lot of taste when it comes to that. Um, cinnamon, cedar. Mm -hmm. In the retro hail. Go ahead, Mr. Jonathan. Cinnamon, cedar. And if you miss the show, the trick to retro hailing is take a full puff of the cigar with your mouth closed, just breathe through your nose, <laughs> and try not to cough <laughs> like Mr. Jonathan. He's going to throw up. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> You ever uh, cough so hard that your junk hurts? Because that's yeah. what happened. 
Woo. You can't do it, huh? I inhaled a little bit by accident. Just it's bad. You take too much smoke, just a little bit. I did. I blow took most the smallest of it out. little pot. No, and then blow it out, and then the little that's left. I got, I got one you. more. I got one more mailbag here. You have any flavor from that? Yeah, vomit. Yeah, I choked in my own vomit. Uh, this message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Justin writes, I've listened on and off for the better part of two years. I missed about six months of shows, but I've been binge listening to catch up. I'm not a binge listener. Now I'm finally caught up. And due to a few fellow listeners' comments, I felt I needed to chime in to Barry specifically. Uh-oh, here it comes, Barry. Put put on Keep the cup. the jokes juvenile or not coming. Humor helps keep the mood light, and people need more of it instead of being so he uptight. He wants to keep going. He wants it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in America has become soft and PC, and I'm so tired of it. Great cigar info, industry updates, and the relationship and banter you guys have is awesome. Can't wait for the future shows. Justin in California. Wow. I, I felt a bad one coming there for him. and it's a long shot when mm-hmm. it comes out of Hey, uh, I meant to tell you. Yeah. The gentleman who writes to us from China okay. walks in the Seabrook store <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> on Friday. And he we have Max there doing a Rock and right. event. And he goes right around Max. You I came to see. And I said, how you doing? I'm David. <laughs> nice to meet you. And he said, it's terrible. I can't remember his name. Oh, my God. It's not. Wayne Chun. No, he's an he's American. He's oh, been living okay. there for 22 years. He wrote to us a couple of times, and um, he speaks full Chinese, full Japanese. He's a um, golf pro. Wow! In China, awesome. and uh, he came up, and we had a cigar together, and uh, I asked him a lot of questions about what you do, what the hell are you doing there, and it's all golf, and uh, he comes up every once in a while into the area, and. Uh, had a cigar with me. It was awesome. Very cool. Awesome. International. And uh, I listen to the Ash Holes all the time. So Dan, uh, who works for us and does the Ash Holes show, Dan came in on his day off. Right. Because what do you do when you work here is you come in on your day off. And uh, I said, hey, uh, uh, do you know who this is? And he said, uh, yeah, that's Pastor Padron. <laughs> and he gets up and he takes a picture with them and uh, nice, yeah, big so, fan. So I did a little a little cyber stalking this week. Yeah, you know, there's a segment on the Ash Holes called Miles with Styles. Yeah, find her Instagram page. Oh, she's hot, right? Yeah, it's borderline pornographic. Really? And yes, I will show everybody after the show. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know she was supposed to come up, but she got in a terrible accident uh, hitting the coral reefs. Oh. Uh, wow. During a yeah, sure. concussion yeah. and uh, lots of stitches and uh, just couldn't uh, couldn't come around, but she was going to actually come up and do the show live. Do you know she's deaf? She's deaf. She signs in multiple languages. She can lip read in multiple languages. And she sounds perfect and looks yeah. perfect. Yep. Definitely amazing when you listen to her to realize that she yeah. she speaks better than us. Not hearing than, than all us, us hearing yes. what we're saying. Right. Something. I do want to send out our Cigar Authority condolences, uh, a fan of the show, uh, listener, and I consider him a friend, uh, not just on Facebook, although we've only conversed on Facebook. Uh, our friend Yuri Rabel lost his uh, wife this week oh, on sorry. Monday, so our condolences. We will uh, dedicate this to show you. to her as well. Sure. Yuri. Uh, okay, that's it. That's all the time we have. We are getting on a plane tomorrow morning and uh, getting all the information to you. As I, as I said, we're going to feed it all to Barry. And uh, we will be broadcasting from Las Vegas at the IPCPR, that's the International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers Convention and Trade Show. We'll tell you what it looks like, who is there. We'll talk to anyone and anyone in the cigar business that will have us. Uh, Watch our daily updates on thecigarauthority.com. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And whether you're smoking your Balmoral and Yeho Exo Lancero, or the Rocky Patel 20th anniversary, always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. Two guys rock. Two guys rock. With a 
Hi, this is Pat Whitley. Can I have your attention for a second? I want to tell you about a fellow named Dave and the fact I have been buying my cigars from him since 1985 when they first opened up. It's Two Guys Smoke Shop. Now, Two Guys Smoke Shop have three convenient locations right over the Massachusetts border in tax-free New Hampshire. Now, here's something I bet you didn't know. Two Guys Smoke Shop is America's largest cigar shop and has the largest inventory of cigars anywhere. Wait till you see this place. You're not going to believe it, all right? Now, if you like cigars, you can't find a better place to buy them than at Two Guys Smoke Shop. They're in Salem, New Hampshire, Seabrook, New Hampshire, and their new location in tax-free Nashville, New Hampshire. It is worth the ride. You can call 888-2-CIGAR-2. That's 888-2-CIGAR-2 or on the web at twoguyssmokeshop.com. The best place to buy cigars anywhere is Two Guys Smoke Shop. It's Stogie Heaven. With a million choices, Stogie Heaven.